Hello 3D printing friends! Summer is right around the corner, so today on the BB3D channel we'll look at a fun little 3D printing summer project you can do with your kids, grandkids, or even if you're a kid yourself or just a kid at heart. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BB3D. Hi, welcome back. You know, when I was a kid, I was always making things to entertain myself, and one of the things I remember making was a pinwheel. I would cut a square out of paper and then cut lines from the corners toward the center and curl every other corner in toward the center. Then I'd stick one of Mom's sewing pins through all that paper and into the eraser on the end of a pencil. Voila, a pinwheel. And while they didn't really work all that well, it was still fun to make something from stuff you had available around the house. Well, today we're going to design and print a pinwheel in Tinkercad. Then we'll print it out and put it together. The putting it together part is going to make use of a technique known as thermoforming, which is a fancy way of saying we're going to use heat to soften the plastic, then form it into the shape that we want. Our heat source is going to be hot water. Not boiling hot, but about 75% of the way there. Hot enough to soften PLA and therefore hot enough to burn you if you're not careful. Note, if you are an actual kid, even though you may have your own 3D printer, please make sure you have an adult handy for the thermoforming part of the process. The last thing I want is for anybody to get hurt. As they say, safety first, kids. Okay, so I've described the basic design for a pinwheel, a square with cuts from the corners toward the center. The other parts we're going to need to design are the stick part of the pinwheel, the spindle part that the pinwheel spins on, and a spacer to keep the pinwheel far enough away from the handle that the blades don't hit it, and a cap to put on the spindle to keep the pinwheel from falling off. Let's get into Tinkercad. I've already got a blank design ready to start tinkering in. All right, let's rename this design. This is not an exquisite espoo. This is, in fact, our pinwheel. All right, all this is going to be done using Tinkercad's basic shapes. We're not going to use any fancy parts. So let's start with the stick part, and we'll use a box for this. So drag a box out onto the work plane. We'll use the inspector panel here to adjust the size. I want it to be 150 millimeters wide, and I want it to be 10 millimeters high, and 10 millimeters in length. And just to soften the edges on this a bit, I want to put a bevel on it. And we'll do that by setting a radius of two millimeters, which rounds everything over, but then we'll set the number of steps to one, and that'll force it to be a bevel. This trick of using the radius and steps values to get nice, even results only works when the inspector panel knows the size of the object. Strangely, when you adjust the size of an object by manipulating its sizing handles, those changes aren't reflected in the inspector panel. So if we had simply resized by dragging the resizing handles or setting the values on the work plane to get it to be 150 by 10 by 10, the inspector panel wouldn't know that. It still thinks the box is 20 by 20 by 20. So the radius and the step values get stretched out and they don't look the way you expect. That's why anytime I want to use this trick, I always adjust the size of the object using the inspector panel. Sometimes I have to use the resize handles first to figure out the final dimensions of the object, but then I'll use those dimensions on the second object in the inspector panel so the radius and step values look the way I expect. Okay, now we need to make the spindle. And this is going to go into the stick part and the pinwheel is going to spin around it. Now, if we printed the stick and the spindle vertically, the layers would be sort of like a stack of pancakes, and there's a good chance that it would be easy to snap the part in half. So we print them horizontally to give them strength. That's why I'm not designing the spindle to print as part of the stick. It'll print horizontally and we'll add a hole in the stick in just a bit that the spindle will go into. We're going to make the spindle from a box like we did with the stick, but since we're not going to use a bevel on it, we can resize it without using the inspector panel. So drag a box out onto the work plane. We'll set the length to 40 millimeters, and we'll set the width and the height to 3.8 millimeters. Okay, so we have the stick and the spindle. Now we need to make the hole in the stick for the spindle. And this will be yet another box, but this time we'll use the hole kind. So drag a hole box out onto the work plane and we'll set its width and length to 4.6 millimeters. We'll set its height to 11 millimeters, just so that it isn't too tall and it won't get in the way. 
Now you may be wondering why I'm using a value of 4.6 millimeters for this hole when the part of the spindle that's gonna go into it is 3.8 millimeters. Well, I'm doing that because when the printer prints that 3.8 millimeter wide part of the spindle, the nozzle is going to trace out a rectangle that's exactly 3.8 millimeters wide. But the nozzle is centered on that measurement, and so half the width of the nozzle is outside of that line. That means that the actual width of that side of the spindle is going to be 3.8 millimeters plus an extra 0.02 millimeters on one side plus another 0.02 millimeters on the other side. And that works out to 4.2 millimeters wide for the part of the spindle that sits on the print bed. And that measurement will carry up all the way up as the part prints. And the same thing goes for the hole in the stick. It's going to be 0.4 millimeters smaller than what we specify here in Tinkercad because of the same effect. That means instead of being 4.6 millimeters wide when it prints, it's actually going to be only 4.2 millimeters wide, and that should match the size of the spindle, I hope. And even with all this measuring, it'll probably still be a snug fit. When it comes time for assembly, we'll probably need to sand or file the end of the spindle just a bit to get it to fit, but can you imagine what it would be like if we had designed the spindle and the hole both at 4 millimeters? The spindle would be 4.4 millimeters wide, and the hole would only be 3.6 millimeters wide, and that's off by almost a full millimeter, and that would never fit. So, pro tip, when you're designing parts that are supposed to fit into one another, remember to leave allowances for the way the printer actually prints things. Okay, back to designing. Let's turn off Tinkercad's perspective view and switch to orthographic view instead. I know it's cool to have it look like the parts are getting smaller as they're further away from you, but when you're designing pieces that need to fit together, it's often useful to disable that effect. That way, when you're looking down on a part from above, for instance, you're seeing the correct dimensions when you're trying to line up another part with it. So that's this button right here. And now let's drag this small hole part over to the end of the stick. And here's another fun Tinkercad trick. With a part selected, press the F key on the keyboard. Tinkercad will focus on that object and zoom in or out as necessary so that the entire thing is visible. So I'm gonna click on the stick and press the F key, and now Tinkercad has zoomed in to show the entire stick. I'm going to use the view control cube to change to a top-down view. I don't know if that's really called a view control cube, but that's kind of what it does, so that's what I'm gonna call it. You can grab it by its edges or corners and rotate everything around. And you'll also notice that the edges, faces, and corners of the cube get a little highlight on them when you point to them. And if you click on those highlights, the cube will rotate so that that part is directly facing you. So here we've got our top-down view. We need to get this hole for the spindle lined up along the center line of the stick. So click and drag a selection that touches both of these parts. Then press the L key or click the Align icon and you'll get these nice fat circles to align things. So we'll click this one to align them on their centers here, and then we'll click this one over here to line that hole up with the very tip of the stick. Now click on the work plane away from any objects so that nothing is selected. Then click once on that hole piece and tap the F key on the keyboard to zoom in on it. Now we're zoomed in on the hole part and we can use the arrow keys to nudge it around a little bit. I think having it about four millimeters in from the top of the stick is just about right. And now with those two pieces aligned the way we want, click and drag a selection around them again. Then click the group icon to group them together. When you group a hole with a solid, the hole part gets cut out of the solid. It's kind of like a disintegrator ray or something and it's one of the basic ways to modify objects in Tinkercad. There, so far we have the stick and the spindle done. Now we need to make a little spacer, and this is gonna fit over the spindle, and its purpose is to keep the pinwheel part separated from the stick just a bit. That way, when the pinwheel spins, the blades won't be hitting the stick. If they did, it wouldn't spin. Now this is just gonna be a short tube, so we'll drag a cylinder out onto the work plane. And we like smooth cylinders, so in the inspector panel, set the number of sides to 64. And I want this to be a little bit narrower than the stick itself, so let's make it nine millimeters by nine millimeters. And that 20 millimeter value is just too tall. I think if we set it to about five millimeters, it'll probably be just right. So now we have a short cylinder, but I need it to be a tube because it's going to fit over the spindle and it needs a hole in the center. 
So since I want this to be able to spin freely, the hole needs to be larger than the spindle's thickness. Math says that the diagonal measurement of the spindle's thickness is close to about six millimeters once it's printed out. So if I make the hole six and a half millimeters, then it should still fit when it prints out. Now, one thing that I like doing when I have a cylinder that I need to cut a hole out of is just duplicate the cylinder and make it a little smaller and then turn it into a hole. I find that faster than dragging a new cylinder out onto the work plane. So with this cylinder selected, let's click the duplicate icon and that'll make a copy of it. Now we have two of them, but they're sitting right on top of each other, so you can't really tell. I'm going to set the sides to six and a half millimeters. And now you can see what it's looking like. And then we need to turn it into a hole. So if you click the hole icon over here in the inspector, you can see it now turns into a hole. So we're going to draw a selection around both of those. And we're going to use the align tool and we're going to align them on centers like so. And then I will group them. And now we have a spacer. Let's finish up work on the spindle system by creating a little button or cap to go on the end of the spindle. And this will be glued in place and it'll serve to keep the pinwheel from coming off the front of the spindle. Now we could just make a cylinder and cut a square hole out of it, but we can also use a fancier basic shape, something more in line with the aesthetics of a pinwheel. A pinwheel looks an awful lot like a propeller, so why not make something like the spinner that you'd see on the front of an airplane? Let's scroll down a bit in basic shapes and grab the paraboloid shape and we'll drag that out onto the work plane. Let's make the base of it nine millimeters by nine millimeters. And let's make the height nine millimeters as well just to keep its original proportions. Now remember this is supposed to go on the end of the spindle so we need to cut a small square out of the bottom of it. Let's grab a box, the hole kind, and drag that out onto the work plane. We'll set its size similar to what we did for the hole in the stick. So we'll make this 4.6 millimeters and this 4.6 millimeters, but it only needs to be about three millimeters tall. Now we're gonna do that same align and group thing that we've been doing to get these lined up on their centers. And we're gonna group that together. And now, we have a hole cut out of the bottom of that little spinner tip. The final piece we need to design is the actual pinwheel itself. Now the pinwheel is a flat square, but of course we need to start with a box object. So let's drag a box out onto the work plane. We're not going to be applying any bevels or anything to it, so we don't need to use the inspector panel to resize it. Let's set its height to 0.4 millimeters. Yes, it's very thin. When this prints, we only want the square part to be two layers thick. Then let's make it 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters. And we'll move that over here so we can work on it. Now we've got a large, thin square. This square is gonna need some cuts from the corners in toward the center because we're going to be folding this in on itself to form the blades. And we'll need a hole at the center and holes at the corners, so this will all fit over the spindle. One more thing it's going to need is an integrated spacer, so the blades don't get pushed too far down onto the pinwheel at the center. And this will help us get that classic pinwheel shape when we're thermoforming the blades. The easiest way to integrate the spacer with the square is to duplicate the one that we already made and put it in the center of the square. So I'll click the spacer that we've got here and click Duplicate. Now I have a copy of it and I can drag that copy over to the square. Select both the square and the spacer and align them on their centers. That spacer isn't tall enough, so let's set its height to 15 millimeters. That looks better. But if we look at it from the top, we can see that the spacer isn't cutting a hole out of the bottom of the square. That's okay though, because what we can do is ungroup the two parts of the spacer, and then we can group all three of these parts together, and we'll get what we need. There we go. Now we've got a hole and a spacer, and everything's good so far. Now we need a hole at each corner, and I wanna do the holes before we do the cuts from the corners, so that we're not having to adjust too many things at once. Let's drag a hole type cylinder out onto the work plane. Set it to have 64 sides, 
And I want these holes to have plenty of room and not bind when they're on the spindle. So let's set this to be seven millimeters by seven millimeters. And since we're cutting through the square, it only needs to be about one millimeter tall. We're gonna need four of these, so I'm going to duplicate that. I'll move one of the duplicates. And then I can duplicate it a few more times. And off we go. So let's make sure that we're using the pure top-down view. And I wanna put one of these holes at each corner like this. And then I wanna make sure that these holes are four millimeters in from each side of the corner. So we'll move it in four here and then four here. And we're gonna do this for each one of the holes. Okay, that looks right. So let's group these pieces together. All right, now we have our corner holes cut as well. All that's left now is to make cuts from the corners up to the center. Our cutting tool of choice will be, of course, a hole part and we'll make it from a box. So drag another box out onto the work plane. It needs to be narrow and long, so we'll make it a millimeter wide, 40 millimeters long, and two millimeters high. And we need to rotate this 45 degrees. There we go. Now I need two of these that are at that rotation so I'm going to duplicate this. There we go, so I've got that. And then I need to duplicate that again and I need to flip those horizontally. Okay, so now I've got my four cutting tools that I'm going to use and these need to go one at each corner. So let's get those put into place. So for each of these cuts, let's move it out of the square by a millimeter. And then we need to move them about nine millimeters to the right of each hole that they're by. So we're gonna nudge this up nine, maybe 10. There we go, let's do 10. We'll nudge this over by 10 to the right. We'll nudge this by 10 down. And we'll nudge this by 10 to the left. And with all of that done, we'll draw a nice big selection around that and group those together. And now we've got the cuts taken out that we need. And when we're making the pinwheel, these corners are going to get folded over and they're going to rest up on top of the, the hole here. So that's it. We've designed all of the pinwheel parts. The last thing we need to do here in Tinkercad is arrange things neatly on the work plane and then export the design as an STL. I'll arrange these kind of like this and then we'll export the whole thing as a single STL. Kind of even that out and put that over there. That should be fine. So like I said, I've got these arranged and I'm gonna export this all as one file. If you want, you can select each individual piece of the design and export them one at a time, and you'll end up with five files. I only want to deal with one. When I put this on Thingiverse, I'll have each separate piece as a separate file, but for now, I want it easy, so I'm doing it this way. Now we've got an STL, and we can slice it and print it. So I'm slicing this at a 0.2 millimeter layer height and I'm slicing it using temperatures and speeds appropriate for the material that I've got loaded on the printer. And by the way, if you haven't tried the new Prusa Slicer, formerly Slicer Prusa Edition, that's what I'm using here and it's really, really nice. I've got it set up to send files over to the Octoprint server that controls this printer so I can just slice and send and the print will start. It's super convenient. Slice and send. So let's let the printer get started and then I'll cut over to a time lapse and after that we can start getting the pinwheel assembled.
Okay, the print is done, the Wham Bam PEX sheet is cool, and it's time to get these parts off so we can get this pinwheel put together. Just a quick flex back and forth is enough to get these off the PEX sheet, and another couple of flexes to get that thin, flat pinwheel off of there. I love this stuff. Okay, now that we've got the parts printed out, let's test fit a couple of things before proceeding. First, let's get the spindle inserted into the stick part. If it's a loose fit on yours, a drop of CA glue will keep it in place. Next, add a spacer and then put on the pinwheel part. And right now, we're just making sure that the pinwheel part spins freely. Don't try to bend the pinwheel into shape yet. It'll likely break if you do. Yep, it spins well. If yours doesn't, sand or file down the corners on the spindle a little bit just to round it over, and that should do the trick. Well, now it's time to do the thermoforming process so we can get the blades on the pinwheel curled up. Let's head out to the kitchen and we'll get ourselves into some hot water. For this, we need water that's about 75 degrees C. What I do is heat two cups of water in a microwave safe container for about 90 to 120 seconds. This seems to get it up to the temperature that we need. What we're going to do is dunk one blade at a time into the hot water to soften it up. You might want to wear some kitchen gloves for this part just to protect your fingers from the hot water. Me, I'm not using gloves. I'm just being careful not to burn myself. You need to be careful too. Okay, so here we go. We're dunking the first blade into the water and then taking it back out. I'm grabbing the corner and pulling that over to the spacer in the middle. What we need to do is make sure to get the hole in the corner lined up with the hole in the spacer. The more accurately you can do that, the better the pinwheel will work. The plastic won't stay soft for very long. If it firms up while you're trying to form it into the right shape, you can dunk it in the hot water again to soften it. Repeat this for the remaining corners. And don't worry if you mess it up. You can put the pinwheel back in the hot water and it'll unfold. Then you can start over again. Don't worry, it took me a couple of tries to get it right too. There, now that we've got all the holes lined up, let's finish assembling our pinwheel. Assemblers, assemble. Okay, here we are. We've got the stick and spindle combo, we've got the spacer, we've got the thermoformed pinwheel, and we've got the end game, I mean end cap. So put the spacer on the spindle, follow that up with the pinwheel, and finally a drop of CA glue will hold that end cap in place. And that's it. You, my friend, have made yourself a thermoformed 3D printed pinwheel. Thermoforming is a great way to form strong, complex shapes that might otherwise be difficult to print. Think of all the supports that would have been necessary if this pinwheel part had been printed already in its final shape. And even if you did manage to get it printed in its final shape as a single part, it probably wouldn't be as strong due to the way the layers would be stacked. For fun, you could print the parts in different colors. You know, the 4th of July is just around the corner, so I may print a few in red, white, and blue. Print one out in your nation's colors and celebrate summer. Why not experiment with different ways to form the pinwheel? What if you only printed in a single layer? Would it be strong enough, yet flexible enough, to curl into the right shape? What if you printed the pinwheel square from a flexible material like TPU? Try different ways of doing this. Tweet photos of your ideas, attempts, successes, or failures, and tag me when you do, because I'm interested to see what you come up with. Here's my Twitter handle. Okay, with that, we're pretty much at the end of the episode, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments. A huge thanks to all of you who subscribe, like, comment on, and share these videos. That really helps the channel grow, and I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Just click the subscribe button down there. And if you like knowing the instant I release a new video, well, there's a bell icon right next to it. If you like the content I'm producing, please consider supporting the channel with a one-time micropayment. You could buy me a coffee or leave a little something in the PayPal tip jar. Links for both are in the description. Well, my kid's been eyeing this pinwheel, so I'm going to print a few more in different colors to surprise her. You go print something cool, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>